Hi guys, this is Pestilian. Welcome to another Skate for Tarkov video. Today I'm covering Ground Zero. Everything you need to know from the extracts, where the good loot is, uh, where you spawn in, and all the little high threat areas that you should know about. So, if you're new to the game, this is the map you're going to be going on a lot early on. So without further ado, let's crack straight into it. Alright, so if you're new to Tarkov and you've just started up playing, the first 20 levels, it might go down to 15 eventually or 14. Uh, this is the map you're going to be playing. I'm going to take you around the whole map right now and uh, show you everything you need to know. So, let's get into it. Okay, so, this is ground zero. What you need to know is there is one giant road that covers the whole center line of ground zero. Once you understand that, everything is off to each side of that road or at the very end of each end, right? It, it's not really all these long side streets or anything like that. There are like perimeters to it, but ultimately there is just one main road that goes down the center and everything happens off that. Um, I'm down at the Emicon extract end. So this is the Emicon extract end. Uh, there is the scav checkpoint. If you double tap O, uh, the scav checkpoint extract is just over there. Um, if you go down this part right here, it goes down into an underground section, which I'm going to cover as well. And um, then right down the other end, that's the Nakatani basement stairs uh, down that far other end of the road. And then uh, there's the car extract on this side. And then the mirror extract, which is the flare extract on this side. So um, that's the, the, the whole perimeter of the map and where all the extracts are. I will show you each of them and what you should look out for in each area. I'm not going to go through each individual little tiny thing of each building, but um, I'll try and cover, cover as much as possible. Now, if you, if you go into an offline raid, you can follow me around. All right, I won't try and do many too big jumps, but pretty much if you can run down this main road until you find uh, this part going down... Um, then you can pretty much follow me from here. So if you're in offline raid, you can follow me around and then you get your bearing yourself. So over to this side, this is the Emicon extract side. Now, um, when you're very starting out, there is a quest that requires you to go over to here uh, and you also need to survive our, like taking out four meds. So um, there can be a med box on top of here. Uh, there's this guy in here that you can loot. And there's also the med spawn. So you'll need like a Salua very early on. Um, and then over here is the actual Emicon extract. So standing right here, where I'm standing right now, I don't know why the screen glitched out like that, it was a bit weird. Um, if you're standing on top of this body, you'll be able to extract through the Emicon. I don't have that one, but this is where it is. Now, I might go around the edge of the map um, on this side, just so you can understand where it goes. So on this side, You can go through this building, and this building is where the wine is located when you get up to the wine quest. Uh, I think it's after debut. So, running down here. Now, along here is the mirror extract. To get to the mirror extract, you need to run down this path. And this is available every single raid. You can do this. No matter where you spawn, you can take the mirror avenue extract. But there's a catch to it. And I'm going to show you that. So, inside this building, um, there's plenty of loot. A lot of like toolboxes and stuff like that. Uh, and some, some dead scabs and duffel bags. The loot is dialed down a little bit on this map, but it's nothing um, nothing to, to spit at, you know? Like, it's 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 still quite valuable and a lot of hideout items you can get early. All right, so, Emicon down that way. We're pretty much, this is, uh, that's that main road going down and then un underneath it, I told you about, is right there. So, if you come down to here, um, you loot this scav. He always has it on him. If it's, if it's not there, I'm going to cry. He always has it on him. Every time you load in, doesn't matter where, um, this scav will always have the flare on him. You take out the flare. You need to move to like, down the bottom right. It says signal flare area. You aim up. You shoot it. You wait about two seconds. And then you just run down this way. And you've got about 45 seconds to get out. All right. So that's the start to extract. So you can keep running further down that way, but we're not going to go down that way because I want to show you the map. So that is the mirror avenue extract. It is great to use. I use it a lot. Um, because I'll show you where the, the good loot is that I use. Um, but when you go down this, uh, this road right here or the underneath part, I loot all this section down here, come back down here, pop the flare and leave. All right. If I've got Emicon extract and the flare's taken, I can go down that way. If I've got Nakatani, um, then I go through this building or I can go back under. So yeah, that's pretty much, uh, the mirror Avenue extract. Um, just so you understand over on this side. Uh, you'll spawn in here a lot. Please do not go this way. There is landmines. You will blow up. See, there's a mine sign. Anything over this side, you will die. Don't even try and go over there. Um, so, yeah, that's the perimeter of the map about there. 
scav to loot there. Over here, you've got um, a med bag, another med bag here, and then weapon crates can spawn along here. So you can have like three weapon crates, and there's the two med bags. Really handy to know where these med bags are early because um, you need to hand me a quest, but it's also going to be one of those things that you want to get a lot of your meds um, as early as possible. Now, um, this, I guess it's called the Oasis. I, I, I don't know. Fusion. It's got on the, on the map that I'm looking at. This building here, uh, there is a fair few spawns in there. It's actually quite a, a decent spawning uh, of building. I'm not going to like point out every little toolbox and stuff, but I'm just trying to give you the bearings. Um, so you guys understand. There's a glass window there. It's hard to tell what the glasses are. I've done probably about 50 raids of this map now. Uh, on my hardcore, I did a heap. So if you go upstairs here, there's not really a lot upstairs. I think there's like a duffel bag and stuff, but it is actually quite a good vantage point. A lot of the PvP action happens in two spots. Pretty much. I can run across. I'm out of stamina. The two spots are this building over this side. Um, there's a task where you got to get like a, uh, a key off the medical dude and then go through the medical building and get the document. And then this building up here where there's a 50 cal up there and people like to camp up here. There's a lot of crates up there as well. A lot of the action happens in these two buildings uh, or along the road section here. So you can actually come up here with a sniper. The car extract is that car there that you can see with the red lights on. Um, that's the car extract. So you can actually come up here and snipe people. They're inside this floor right here. You can actually headshot them with the sniper or they're inside this building here. And you'll be amazed how many people fight down the bottom along here or inside this section here and along here. This is pretty much the main PvP area. So if you are looking for a vantage point, it's good, but it's not something you should sit at too long because the only way is down is that staircase or jumping. Now, there is no problem with jumping. You will uh, potentially break your legs. I do have a split on me. Let's hope I don't do it too bad. I did break my leg. Um, but there are probably points I, I just haven't researched, um, but you could jump down and land on stuff. Like say, if you did the vault here, there's you probably wouldn't break your leg on that. Um, or potentially if you did the vault to the outside, which I've done before. Um, I think I sprinted out and landed on that bin and I didn't break my leg. So um, I'm going to go down this side, come back down there, and then I'll go underneath. I think that'll be the easiest way to do it. So inside this building, um, a lot of loot. There's a lot of loot. So you're looking at uh, trying to find like toolboxes along here and duffel bags. Oops, this still here. And inside here, there is two ration supply crates. It's a ration one. This is a ration one. And then this is a technical supply crate. Um, very good early on. You want your Iskras for your Jaeger task and uh, technical supply crates. You're looking at stuff like measuring tapes and, and spark plugs so you can upgrade your hideout. If you ever are low in food and hydration, this room usually is stacked. I don't know why it's not at the moment. because it's Probably because I'm in offline mode. There's less loot in offline mode. I can guarantee you, if you come on online mode, this room is completely stacked for food and drink. Just on all the tables and along the counter. Um, so yeah, you can definitely get a lot of uh, food and drink here. So you're ever struggling with food and drink, you got your stomach blown out, it's good to go. Uh, there is a med crate that spawns on here, or a med box. Uh, and there's no need for this room, but I just want to show you it. I think it's kind of cool. cool. Cool map design, you know. But anyway, um, I haven't found any loot in here. I've been checking, but nothing spawned yet. If you guys know something, let me know. I don't think there's doors openable. No, cool. All right, as you come through this way, uh, more toolboxes will spawn down here and along the bottom. Um, there is an upstairs section I just skipped, uh, which is back up here. It's above the, the food uh, area that we were just in. Um, so you're, you're looking at stuff like all the technical spawns and that. And then there, there's food and drink that spawn up here. So kind of like how this is up on the table, downstairs will be filled like that as well. Um, also another spot you can actually shoot people across the hallway. Um, the squads camp that like level I, I ran into multiple level like 15 to 20 squads that have like two to three players maybe even four and uh, yeah they camp it um, there's nothing else further up down goes down to the basement which I'll be showing you guys at the end all right as we go along this side uh, whoops a little bit too far and we're just for where we started when we we're looking down that main road we're just walking down the buildings on the right hand side um, inside here, there's a few computers and uh, food and drink spawns. So drink will spawn on the table, um, like hot rods and uh, and stuff like that. Filing cabinets and some computers. So early on, you can grab some of your computer stuff if you wanted to. People have said they found graphics cards. I think on my main account, I found a graphics card in this map. So it's possible. It's definitely possible. Now, 
I would highly recommend do not run along that side. All right, you. Always, I've always gone around the back here, and I'll explain to you right now why. Um, this building here, on the right, has an automatic grenade launcher or an AGS they call it, a automatic grenade system, right there. And I've sat in it a fair bit. I, I sit behind it and wait till I see someone, and then I run up to it when it's already like been primed, and uh, I shoot people. It's a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, there's not really much to loot in this building. I wouldn't waste your time, particularly putting yourself exposed to that AGS. Um, maybe there's something I'm missing, but I've never found anything in there. I've only gone in there like three times, so. Never found anything noteworthy, I should say. Besides the dead bodies I killed. Anyway, coming into this building. So, there's a quest that requires you to go up to that AGS. You'll sometimes spawn... Uh, on the ground floor down that end. So the AGS spawn is up here. You go up this staircase. There's a heap of uh, filing cabinets and computers that you can guys can loot. There's a filing cabinet over there and then computers all through this. And then same in the next room, which is the AGS room. So you do need to come in here for a quest later on. So there's the AGS and then there's the computers all over the shop and there's some filing cabinets and toolboxes. So yeah, if you are going to use the AGS, this is the way I suggest doing it. You prime it like this. You uh, move it so it sits on that van. And I believe if you just go back on it, it should still be on the van. Oh, it went back down. Okay. So anyway, that's your reference point, the van. So when you stand back here, I was standing back here and I would just wait for, for players. And then I would say, okay, there's someone coming up and you've already primed it and you can just go straight onto it, aim down a little bit, you're on the van and then you just shoot them. You'd be surprised how many squads cross the road. And if you, they're running up on the right-hand side, they can't actually get past this section without having to go through the bushes and they get stuck there. So yeah, works pretty good. But uh, you, have, you do have to come in for a quest so you will have people coming up here. Uh, I'm not saying you should camp it, but you know, if you're like looting filing cabinets and jackets and all that, or filing cabinets and computers, you, you know, pop out your head and have a quick look to see if anything's there. Um, as for the rest of this building, there's nothing too crazy to loot in here. Um, I've checked this room up the top here a few times. Uh, it's mostly just food and drink that will spawn on the table. Um, on this table here. And then, yeah, you can come down to the other end. Now, I believe you'll spawn here. Or around there. So if you get that spawn, you'll understand where you are. Generally, if I spawn in this spot, I actually just run straight down to that next building. I don't stick around this area um, because unless you have to do that quest upstairs, I'd rather go in there and then I go down into the basement or I push across to this building where the, all the PvP fun is. Now, over this side of the map, I could be wrong, but there's not really a lot you need to stress about um, besides the Nakatani uh, extract. So, double tapping O again, Nakatani basement stairs. Be careful people camping and uh, you come down this staircase all the way to the bottom and this is the extract. There's a uh, toolbox here if you want to loot it. And that is the Nakatani tower to meet with Holly. Will die hard fans will understand that. That's pretty much one half of the map, like one side of the map. Um, the other side is a little... I guess a, there's less buildings, but there's a lot of stuff that goes on there. So, running back up this side. There's not a lot you need to know about coming along here. Besides the fact that that AGS can kill you if you do come up this side. So, I generally stick on that side. There's no reason why you'd be at the, at the staircase and then running back along this side of the road. You'd, you'd spawn over here and then you'd run up there. All right, so this is what I was talking about, how you have to go through the, the trees. Now, this is where our first key is located. Inside here... Um, Now, if you do come down this way, that says like 
careful bomb or something. So if you go in there, there's a claymore and it will kill you. Uh, you can unlock this door here with the key. Um, there are filing cabinets inside there, but there's nothing else really special in there. And I wouldn't even waste your time getting the key or taking the key in there. Um, as for the rest of the ground floor, there's not really a lot to explore. Uh, there's a, a, a loose safe down this side, and I'll show you that in a minute. But this is where all the action happens. This staircase coming up. There's a quest for you to, um, to come up here to get to the 50 cal or whatever it is. Pretty sure it's 50 cal. I'll show you a way to get up a little bit smoother. Um, but there is a fair bit of loot up here. There's some filing cabinets over there. There's a technical supply crate back here. And then I can't remember the name of all these crates. I think they're all technicals or mostly technicals. Might be. Uh, there's a medical. There's some filing cabinets. There's loose spawns, computers. I think this is another technical. Yep. And then this is the 50 cal. So I wouldn't sit on this 50 cal to shoot people. Even though you do have a good vantage point, it's pretty sketchy. Um, there's a lot of people that can see you. Um, but yeah, this section right here is where a lot of the PvP action happens. Um, I'll show you a trick to getting up this staircase with a little bit less uh, chaos. Just understand once I teach you this, the chads will know this too. But for example, if you want to get up this staircase, you can literally vault that section there and then just go like this. And then you don't have to go worry about all the wires. If you do it like this as well, if you vault onto this section here, you could probably... Oh no, I still hit the wire. I reckon I've done it once where I pretty much didn't hit the wires at all. Um, so yeah, have a little bit of practice in offline mode if you're uh, going to start fighting people here. But yeah, that is much faster than doing this. Like walking through the wires and then being like... Uh, one last thing to take note of, and like I said, I'm going to try and show you the high threat areas. If you're coming up this staircase, ADS, and then just get ready to shoot someone there. I've shot a fair few heads right there. People just waiting for you to come up. You literally, you know that this section is a high chance people are going to be camping up there. You'll hear them anyway. But yeah, just come around like that, shoot. You'll be very surprised how often people will be like, oh my god, I just got, I just died. Uh, and there's a body there. We're not going to go down to the basement just yet. All right, so coming down from there, we're heading towards that um, that medical building I was telling you about. There is a safe back there that's loose on the ground. And we are now over near the car extract. So 5,000 rubles that's needed for a quest. Um, you take that car and you survive the raid. Very straightforward and simple. You just have to wait a minute to get out. Be careful if you are there though, they can shoot you from up the top, which is where we're heading now. So the main entrance into the building is up here. You do need to go into this building for a quest. Um, so just be wary of that. So right down this end, uh, you'll have to go down there for a quest. There is no like side doors to this hallway. So running down this hallway is kind of suicide. You're probably better off going on the outside. People will camp up there. People will camp up there. People will camp down there. Camp, people will camp there. Horrible building. Right. Go late in the raid if you're doing this quest. Honestly, wait 10, 15, 20 minutes before you even bother. Um, down the back here, there's a body right there. That gets you the key to the quest. I'll show you. All right, let's examine the terror group science office key. It's the only key that really has any purpose on this map, at least for now. And all those offices and stuff are up here. So there's some loot around the back. Nothing too crazy, just like toolboxes and duffel bags and stuff. A lot of dead body scabs. They're, they're the ones you should always be checking. Um, there can be loot inside here. So yeah, uh, and purple suitcases. They're kind of like full RNG. So this door is the one that will cover the car. So there's a med box in here and some other stuff. But if people are going to shoot you at the car, this is where they'll be shooting you. Just be wary of that. There is a cheat way of... Uh, I don't think you need to shoot the window. Let's just check in. At least you... Do I not have the stamina? There we go. Uh, so this is the room that you need the key for, but you don't need the key for because you can just go through the window. So... That's this one here. So you can vault it out the window and then uh, come in here. The quest items on this table in the middle. Yeah, heap of filing cabinets and some med stuff for you. All right, now that we've done that, we're gonna head downstairs. Yeah, so those bodies that I'm talking about, is like that body there. There's another body back there. 
Those ones are actually really good to loot. They'll have ammo. Um, they'll have... They've pretty much got any item in the game, but they also have ammo. Um, and ammo early on. Some 855A1 and that in your M4s. Really, really help out a lot. Alright, so. Now that we're in here. Uh, this is kind of where you have to go for the quest bit. Uh, and there's some weapon crates inside that section. If I run across this way... We are going to be pretty much back where we started. We've done a full lap of the map. So, um, that's the scav checkpoint. Where if you get a player scav and a PMT together, they can extract the map from there. You get a bonus item sent to you from fence. A couple of bonus items. Um, but yeah, now we're back at the center of the road down the other end. Last but not least, I'm going to do one more section of the map, which is the underground section. Uh, and if you're following me along, you should, because this is where I go. So if I spawn in the map, this is pretty much where I want to go. Uh, I want to loot down here. Um, a lot of the PvP action happens up at the top with the quest, but if you're just trying to get your hideout upgraded, make some money, um, this is where I go. Once you're down this uh, into this part here, there's a lot of loot to be grabbed. So there'll be a dead scav and a duffel bag behind that, that car over there. On top of these um, trucks, in offline mode, there's a lot less loot, but on top of these trucks, there'll be loose spawns like found car batteries and stuff like that. There's propane. So if you're looking at the top of all these trucks, um, so yeah, dead scav and then a technical supply crate. There's a lot of... Okay, why can't I... In online, I can loot that. I don't know why I can't loot that in offline. Um, technical supply crate there. Be careful. Um, these doors only open on the left and they breach on the right. And I've had people run up and try and breach them. It's really funny. Um... Yeah, inside there, it goes up to the one with the wine building uh, near the mirror extract. Uh, there's some like toolboxes and dead scavs and stuff. Another technical supply crate. In offline, I can't loot these. Okay. In the online, you can loot all these crates, all right? Uh, there's three technical supply crates here. That is weird. It's like they didn't finish editing. There we go, there's one. I don't know why. In online, you can loot them. Um... A couple of jackets and I think a toolbox in here. Usually there's a toolbox there. All right, now, mirror extract is up there. So if you've already got enough loot to take the extract from there, you can just head straight up there. Dead scav. And then down here, you can breach this door. This actually has a key for it. It's called like the utility key. But inside here, there's uh, the toolbox. There's an ammo crate on there. Uh, that's sometimes lootable. There's another ammo crate, maybe a grenade crate and a weapon box, and then a dead scav up here. So just vault up onto that. And just vault up onto that, and then just do that. dead scav. Um, I've had two evasion armbands in a row on this scav. So um, good little room. Uh, I just did my priority key guide. If you haven't checked that out, you should. It should give you a good idea to understand what keys you should be, uh, should be getting. And... Um, People are saying that you should get that key. And I'm like, well, you can just breach the door at the moment. So unless they change it, you can just keep breaching it. As you run down this side, there are a few... I think there's like a duffel bag on the right here or something or a dead scav. Um, but you can check like these crates and stuff for items. There's nothing in there. There's nothing in there that I've found. Uh, at least I don't think. Maybe I have. You can go around the back there. This goes up that really high threat building, the one where the people have the barbed wire and all that. As you come down this side, you can loot this crate from the bottom normally. Yep, there. There's another one there, another one there, and sometimes a toolbox that spawns up here. Um, and that's like all three technical supply crates. You've got the um, dead body there, and then loose items on the ground too. So, won't take you many runs, but that's pretty much the whole underground. And you can fill like a massive backpack of technical items that you're going to need for your hideout and will have good money. Never actually checked to see what's in this. Okay, so there's the dude in the chair. After that, you pretty much just head upstairs. And if you remember, we're in that room, the building where there's like the cafe section. So Nakatani. So I would go from here. I'd go after I'd done the underground, I would go through that doorway, along the edge of the map, under the AGS, across to Nakatani, and all done. Um, but I want to finish this with a bang. So whilst I'm running to do that, um, I'll do a rundown pretty much of everything. 
I've said. Pretty much, there's a few extracts that are um, quite consistent, being the actual, like, Nakatani and Emicon. You'll pretty much always have one of those two. Mirror extract, you should be using whenever you can. Uh, if you've got a heap of loot and you want a safe extract, it's pretty good. I've, I've never had any issues getting out once I've popped the flare. Um, uh, but it, keep an ear out for people that have popped the flare. And um, outside of that, uh, this is probably the highest threat building, this section here, and then that building down the far end. Um, you do run into people downstairs that have caught on that there's actually quite a bit of loot down there, but just be careful of, uh, of that. Um, hot people hiding down there, but it's very good for loot. And then last but not least, make sure you don't go in this room. But there's a claymore. All right, if you hear that claymore go off, you can go in there and loot there. There's a safe with like gold chains and stuff sitting in there. So once you hear that go off, go in there, get their loot and the, and the safe. Or bait your mate into going in there. And then that way you can get the free loot from them. Anyway, hopefully this has been really helpful. I've uh, tried to cover everything I could. If you're new to Tarkov, this is probably one of the first guides you should be watching. Uh, I'm updating all my guides. So all the older guides are still relevant. There's just things that are missing or need to be updated. So I'm redoing a lot of the, uh, of the ones that have to be updated. And then obviously adding to stuff like when there's been a map expansion. So um, if you've gotten this far, thanks so much for watching so far. Make sure you like and comment. It really does help out with discoverability. Share these videos with your friends if they're new to Tarkov. And last but not least, help um, get me to the million subs by subscribing. Big push. I'm going to work really hard on making really good YouTube content this year for you guys. So um, if you haven't subscribed, please consider. I'm putting out lots of uh, YouTube guides for Tarkov and also working on some of my raid series, hardcore series and stuff like that. Also, if you are watching this, I do have a series called uh, the raid series it's a playthrough of escape from tarkov this wipe i'm doing up the flea market and it's gonna be very in depth so i'm guessing if you're watching this for the first time you're probably newer to tarkov or you've just been part of the wipe and need to know what's going on the map the raid series is a full walkthrough talk through of escape from tarkov for the first 15 levels for the next uh series but the previous series i usually go all the way up to max traders so uh that would just level 42 anyway that's it for this video thanks so much for watching and lastly i'll see you next time